Okay, this video is gonna walk you through the steps to graph a polynomial function using your graphing calculator. So the first step that you need to do is key the polynomial function into your calculator. From there, once you have the polynomial function graphed, you're going to look for the rational zeros. And you can use the calculate button, the calculate zero on your graphing calculator. On a TI calculator, you would hit the second button and then the button that says trace, it would open up a menu and then you pick the option on most calculators, it's option two zeros. And then you will have to find the rational zero you want to check. You will mark a left bound point move the cursor across the axis, mark a route right bound point, hit enter, and then hit enter again. If you have found a rational zero, it will display at the bottom. Let's say you were looking for, for example, on this first example, you indicated on the display that one looked like it was a rational zero, so you can mark it. And then at the bottom of the display, it's gonna show you X equals one and Y equals zero. Once you find a rational zero from your calculator, you can use that zero and do synthetic division with it to keep bringing down the polynomial one power at a time until you can finally get it to a function that can be either factored, quadratic formula, if it's actually a four-term polynomial, you may also be able to factor it by grouping. So for this particular first example, once I keyed it into my calculator, I found that my zeros were all rational for this one. I actually had zeros located at x equals one, x equals three, and another zero at x equals negative two. If all your zeros are rational, not only by looking at the display, you could also look at the table of order pairs and every order pair that has a zero under the Y column is an X intercept. Now, let's say you couldn't tell the other zeros here. And let's say I just did synthetic because I knew X equals one was one of my zeros. I would go ahead and put in my coefficients, and then I would do long division. If all of my zeros ended up being rational, what will happen here is I could actually just factor this, and I won't need to do synthetic division. Um, or I would do synthetic to bring it down to quadratic, but instead of having to do the quadratic formula, I could actually factor it. And that's what's going to happen here. So actually to get these other two zeros, if I didn't see them on my calculator, I could now factor this or do quadratic formula to get the, the value of these x's. But once I set x minus three equal to zero and x plus two equal to zero, my zero is located at x equals three and x equals negative two, which I've already listed over here. Now, whenever your zeros are rational, these zeros are also your x-intercepts. So I have x-intercepts at one comma zero, three comma zero, negative two comma zero. Remember your y-intercept of a polynomial function is just the constant here. So it's the order pair zero comma six. Next, what you're gonna do is you can go ahead and hit the second button and the graph button to open up the table to get your additional order pairs. So once you hit that button, you can get additional points. And again, I would look for additional points in between your zeros. Um, some students are thinking of, of like looking at as finding the peaks. However, if it goes super high, just list me at least another additional point in between the zeros. So negative one comma eight, two comma negative four, four comma 
18 would be some nice additional points. And then the next thing you're gonna do is graph it. And again, just give me a rough sketch here. Remember back in chapter three, we talked about M behavior. So it was X cubed. So my X M behavior is falling left, rising right. And again, remember because it's in X to the third power, we're looking for three zeros. And we found those three zeros. Now, the three zeros that we locate, they may be always all three rational. We may find some that are rational, some that are irrational. We also may find imaginary zeros, and you will be listing those. So let me go ahead and graph these x-intercepts as well as the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is the order pair 0, negative 6. I've got a 0 located at negative 2, positive 1, and positive 3. Remember your end behavior is here and here. And again, my additional point that I said I was going to graph is negative 1, positive 8. So I could put a point up here. And then my graph will come up here, come down. Now it's also going to come and go below after it hits this 0. I can also said I was going to graph the order pair 2, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And I can come here. And then again, here would be my final graph. And again, a rough sketch. Just make sure you're listing the additional points. Make sure you have the correct zeros plotted as well as the correct end behavior. Number two also has all rational answers here. I would go ahead and key in my polynomial function into my calculator. And then again, try to figure out which one of those points that are on that x-axis are rational. Um, I noticed that there's one in between zero and one, so it looks like it's about one third. So I'll go ahead and hit my second and trace feature, pick option two for calculate the zero. And then from there, use my left bound mark and my right bound mark, and then hit enter for the guess. And I found out that it's 0.3 repeating. And I know that 0.3 repeating is equal to one third. Now, the other two zeros that I can see from the display, they're also rational. I could also display my table and also look for any Y values that have a value of zero. Those would also be my other X intercepts, which are also my zeros. But what I'm gonna do instead is instead of keeping on and doing the trace feature for the other two points, let me show you what you would do with synthetic division. Once you find one rational zero, you'll go ahead and put the coefficients in here and do synthetic division now. So I'll bring down the 12, I'll multiply, I'll add the column, I'm gonna multiply, I'm gonna add the column, I'm gonna multiply and add the column. Now, if I'm not getting a remainder of zero, either I found the wrong zero that I did the synthetic with, or I've done some kind of mistake in my calculations here. So this is 12x squared minus 24x plus 9 equals 0. It's now quadratic. So I can now find my other two zeros by seeing if it's factorable or even quadratic formula. Now I also notice here that I could actually factor out a GCF, which will make it a little bit easier for me to factor if it's possible. So my GCF between 12, negative 24, and 9 is going to be 3. So I'm going to divide everything by the GCF. I get 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. I now can try to factor this. I could either guess and test or factor by grouping. If I do factor by grouping, I would multiply the 4 and the 3. Factors of 12 that give me negative 8. That will be negative 2 and negative 6. 
So let me go ahead and factor it by grouping. Again, if you prefer to guess and test, you can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and make my groups here. And then now I'm going to factor out a 2x out of the red group. And then I'm left with 2x minus 1. My GCF of the blue group is going to be negative 3. And now put the two GCFs together. So 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 1. This is going to give me the factors that I need to set to equal 0. So the first factor is that GCF. It doesn't do anything for me, nothing to solve here. But I need to do the next one, 2x minus 3, and then the 2x minus 1. I need to add 3. 2x equals 3. Divide by 2, and x equals 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Over here, add 1. 2x equals 1, and x equals 1 half. If you would have done the trace feature on your calculator, you would have seen that the decimal equivalent to 1 half is 0.5, the decimal equivalent to 3 halves is 1.5. So these are my three zeros. So I already listed the 1 third, which I did the synthetic with. So then my other two zeros are going to be 1.5, or 3 over 2, and then 0 0.5, or 1 half. So 1 half, and then this would have been 3 over 2, or 1.5. Now again, these rational zeros are also x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts are going to also be 1 third comma 0, one and a half comma zero, and then half comma zero. My y-intercept is that constant, so it's just going to be zero comma negative three. The additional points that I'll go ahead and graph, and again, these can be different from the ones that you've chosen. I'm going to go ahead and graph one comma negative two, two comma fifteen, and then negative 1 comma negative 60. Again, this negative 1 comma negative 60, I just want to show you the general direction that the graph is heading. So let me go ahead and make an axis here. Okay, so now that I found my x-intercept, my y-intercept, and my additional points, I can go ahead and plot them on my graph. So again, my graphs are going by 1, but I'm going to graph the order pair one third, and then one and a half, and then half. So these are really close together. So this one's going to be kind of hard to see. But again, you've got your graphing calculator that you can use. And then I also have my y-intercept, which is at negative three. So my end behavior for the x cubed graph, it's going to fall to the left and rise to the right. So from this zero here, it's going to come down and it's going to hit that y-intercept and then it's going to come just above and then come down. And then my other additional point was the order pair 1, negative 2. So it'll come down here and then go back up. And again, you can see it a little bit clearer once you key it into your calculator. For number three, again, the process is the same. You're going to key it into your calculator first. You're going to locate one of your rational zeros by using your trace feature or your calculate zero. The rational zero that I found is 0.3 repeating, which is equivalent to one third. So I'm going to do synthetic division with one third. So three, negative 13, negative 17, positive seven. Bring down multiply, add the column, gonna multiply, add the column, multiply, and add the column. I can add in my variables again, so 3x squared minus 12x minus 21 equals 0. I'm going to factor out a GCF of 3. 
make it a little bit smaller and potentially maybe I can factor it. So now looking at my quadratic equation, there are no factors of negative seven that will combine to give me negative four. So I need to do the quadratic formula. My A value is one, my B is negative four, and C is negative seven. I'm gonna plug it into the quadratic formula, four plus or minus, negative four squared minus four times a times c all divided by two times a so x is equal to four plus or minus 16 plus 28 divided by two four plus or minus 44 i can break down the square root of 44 again do not be tempted to simplify the four and the two until after you break down the radical first. Now I can simplify the fraction and my other two zeros are located at two plus or minus the square root of 11. So my three zeros, cause it was an X to the cube graph for number three are gonna be located at X equals one third, X equals two minus the square root of 11 x equals two plus the square root of 11. These are my zeros. My x-intercepts, I can still list radicals as x-intercepts. If they were imaginary, I would not list them. So two minus the square root of 11 comma zero, two plus the square root of 11 comma zero. And again, your y-intercept is that constant, zero comma seven. In addition to listing these three pieces of information, you also need to list your additional points. And again, I'm looking for additional points in between some of my zeros. So negative one comma eight would be a good one. And one comma negative 20 would be another good additional point. And again, now I'm gonna go ahead and graph this. Now, remember, when you looked at your calculator, these two x-intercepts here, they were crazy long decimals. For example, this one would have been negative 1.316, and it went on. And then the two plus square root of 11 was 5.316, and it kept on going. When you list this on the quiz next week, you need to list the intercepts and the zeros in radical form. Do not give me the decimal form of these zeros or x-intercepts. You will get it wrong. So let me go ahead and graph number three. Let me add in some markings here. So again, my x-intercept, I have one at the one-third, and then I have the other one at the two plus square root of 11, which is a little bit bigger than 5.3, so about over here, and then the two minus the square root of 11, which is over here, and then the y-intercept of zero comma seven. So again, your end behavior falls left, rises right, and again, some of the additional points I wanted were negative one, negative eight, so up here, and then positive one and 20, so way down here. So it'll come on up here, come down, hit that zero, and then go back up to that zero. And then the last question on this page is, you're, again, you're gonna key it into your graphing calculator. We're gonna look for a rational zero, and the rational zero, if you look at the display, it looks like it's only touching the x-axis one time. And the display, when you use your trace feature, tells you it's 0 0.25. And 0 0.25 is equivalent to 1 fourth. This will be the fraction that I'm going to use in my synthetic division. So I'll go ahead and set up my division table here, bring down, Multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column, multiply, and notice I got a remainder of zero. 
I'll add back in my variables. Notice I can factor out a GCF of four. And now I'm gonna take a look. Can it be factored? No, it cannot. There are no factors of four that give me one. So again, I need to do quadratic formula and get my, they're either gonna be irrational or they're gonna be imaginary. So let's see what we get. So negative one plus or minus one squared, four times A times C, all under the radical, two times A. And this is gonna give me my other two zeros, one minus 16. Notice here, when I subtract, I have a negative number under my square root. This tells me my other two zeros are imaginary. And that's why when I looked at the display on my calculator, I could only see it touch the x-axis one time. So my zeros, and I will list the imaginaries as a zero. So I have three of them. I have x equals 1 fourth, x equals negative 1 minus i radical 15 over 2, and then x equals negative 1 plus i radical 15 over 2. And then I have the three, only one x-intercept, 1 fourth comma 0. I have my one y-intercept, and that's going to be the order pair, the constant, 0, negative 1 fourth, or negative 4. So now my additional points, and again, I get those from my calculator by hitting the second and the graph button. And it really doesn't matter which additional point you choose, negative 1, negative 20. Um, I could graph 1 half and 4 and 3 fourths, and 1 and 18. Those would be some good additional points. So let me go ahead and make my x and my y axis. Let me go ahead and put in my one rational zero here. And that's at the 1 fourth. And again, I have my y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, at negative 4. And again, my additional point here, negative 1, negative 20, it's way down here. And then 1 and 18 is way up here. So actually, my graph looks like a diagonal line, even though it's a x cubed graph. So this would be the graph. And again, get your additional points from your calculator. You have four more examples that you can do. It's just more of the same. So go ahead and complete the worksheet. And that is it for the review on chapter three, but now using your graphing utility.